What's up guys, my name is Stu, and today I'm going to be going over episodes that reward must-have gear in Star Trek Online. Star Trek Online has a huge number of episodes, all of which reward some type of gear. Some of them are really basic rewards, but some of them are also pretty good. So today I'm going to show you episodes that reward gear that you're probably going to want. Now, unfortunately, the early missions really aren't filled with a lot of useful gear in them. Most of the episode rewards are very basic in the early arcs. We're talking a lot of basic gear at either rare or very rare quality. Probably the only exception to this would be the Harpang Torpedo. Now, this isn't a great torpedo, largely because it's not affected by any torpedo firing modes, but it could be useful for players still leveling their characters for that exact reason, because they're going to be either using lower tier ships, or even if they're using a tier 6 ship, they won't have access to all of the bridge officer seating. So the Harpang can actually be kind of useful if you don't have room for Torpedo Spread or Torpedo High Yield. The Harpang Torpedo can be found very early on in the game. For Federation characters, it's the Doomsday Device from the Klingon War arc. For Romulan characters, it's from the episode Tradecraft. But for Klingons, I actually forgot this isn't an episode reward for them. It drops from a duty officer assignment called Obtain Experimental Harpang Torpedo Launcher, which can be found randomly. From then, the episode rewards really don't start getting interesting again until the Iconian War arc. Uneasy Alliance rewards the Romulan Imperial Navy Ground Set. This is an interesting ground set because it consists of an armor, shield, and kit frame. Most ground sets usually include a weapon instead of a kit frame. The kit frame is nice if you like plasma weapons, because not only does it buff plasma damage, but it also has a buff to crit chance and crit severity. So this can be useful for a more weapons-focused plasma build. The two-piece bonus offers some additional crit severity, but it requires you to use the aiming mechanic, and honestly, I don't think I know anyone who ever bothers to even use that anymore. So I'd probably just stick with the kit frame. The episode Broken Circle, also in the Iconian War Arc, also offers two pieces of useful gear. Reactive Armor Catalysts are a device that offer a small heal. They are a consumable item, but selecting this reward also unlocks the ability to craft them, so you'll be able to keep making them as you need them. The other useful item from this episode is the Delta Alliance Reinforcements Beacon. There are a few beacon devices in the game at this point. They all work pretty much the same. Activate them and summon a bunch of NPC ships to help you in combat. This one will summon in three pilot ships to assist you in combat. The nice thing about these beacon devices is that you don't actually have to have them equipped in order to be able to use them. As long as the device is in your inventory, you'll still be able to put it on your bar, so there's no need to waste the device slot for one. Next, we're jumping ahead to the Yesterday's War arc, starting with Temporal Ambassador. Temporal Ambassador rewards a free Tier 3 version of the Ambassador class. Honestly, there's really nothing special about this ship, it's just a free Tier 3 ship. It doesn't even have a unique console. But I always say, a free ship is a free ship. So if you're a fan of the Ambassador class, I would jump ahead to this mission as soon as I hit level 20, because that's when you gain access to Tier 3 ships. That's the only time it's going to be useless, because 10 levels later, that's when you unlock Tier 4 ships. And this is all assuming you don't already own a Tier 6 ship, because Tier 6 ships will level with you as your character level, so there's no need to swap them out. But like I said, free ship's a free ship. At the very least, it's an easy addition for your Admiralty. Also in the same arc is the episode Survivor, which gives the Ferritive Perseverance set. This is another Romulan-themed ground set that focuses more on stealth. While Stealth and Crouch, it gives nice buffs to Crit Chance and Crit Severity, so this is another one that's also good for weapons-based builds. Next, we're jumping to the Future Proof arc, starting with the episode Sunrise. Sunrise rewards the Quantum Phase Catalyst set, which is excellent for a budget phaser build on your starship. The phaser and torpedo both have procs that will help drain enemy shields, the console gives a nice buff to phaser damage, and it has some pretty nice set bonuses. The two-piece set is okay, it just buffs the shield drain of the weapons procs, but the three-piece gives you the ability Quantum Destabilizing Beam which is a sustained beam that will deal phaser damage for 10 seconds and siphon off power from your enemy target. This is a three-piece set, but there are technically four pieces, because you have the option of picking up the phaser in either a beam array or a dual heavy cannon, so this set will work well on both a beam and a cannon build. The episode Time and Tide also features another weapon set, this one for Polaron. The Chronometric Calculation set is a four-piece set, though it has six pieces. A phaser beam and a dual heavy cannon, a turret and an omni beam, a torpedo and a console. The energy weapons on the console are the most interesting pieces of this set. The proc on the weapons has a chance to buff your shield penetration skill, which is really nice, and the console buffs your Polaron damage, your torpedo damage, and your weapons power setting. The set bonuses are more focused on auxiliary power, so this could be kind of nice for a more science-focused energy weapon build. The two-piece is just a basic auxiliary power buff, but the three-piece gives an ability called Chronometric Energy Converter, which will give a buff to your energy weapon damage and exotic damage that scales with your auxiliary power. And the four-piece just increases the proc chance for the weapons. Though the torpedo in this set is a Chronoton Torpedo, and Chronoton Torpedoes kind of suck. There's also another Polaron weapon set that's also an episode reward. That one's further down the list, I'll get to it in a bit. 
but what I would do is get the energy weapons and the console from this set and then mix them in with that other set. But in the meantime, still in the future proof arc, next is Temporal Front. This episode rewards the Nakul ground set, which for a long time has been part of the ground meta. It consists of an armor, shield, and a weapon. Its two-piece bonus has a nice buff to crit chance and crit severity, and the three-piece lets you deploy a crawler mine, which is next to useless. The shield has a unique time slip ability, which makes you invulnerable to damage for a short period of time. I would only bother picking up two of these pieces, the shield and the weapon. You don't even need to use the weapon in this set, you can use another one that you prefer. It's just there for the sake of the set bonus. What I would do is take the armor from the Furative Perseverance set and mix it into this because that armor at least has its own crit chance buff. At least until you're able to get Burnham CQC armor from the Discovery Reputation, because that beats pretty much any armor in the game. Moving on to the New Frontiers arc, first is Echoes of Light, which features the Entoiled Technology set, or as it's more commonly known as, the Nausicaan Disruptor set. This includes a Disruptor Beam Array, a Disruptor Energy Torpedo, and a console. These are also nice for a budget Disruptor Beam build. The two-piece bonus gives both the beam and the torpedo a unique proc that'll deal some extra disruptor damage over time. And the three-piece bonus is just a small buff to disruptor damage and hull penetration. Like I said, this whole set is nice for a budget disruptor beam build. Next is the episode Brushfire, also in the new Frontiers arc, which rewards another disruptor weapon set, which is kind of weird, but whatever. This one includes an omni beam, a torpedo, and a console. Individually, none of them are particularly special, but the two-piece bonus does give a buff to crit chance. The three piece is just a damage resistance debuff that's applied to the torpedo anytime you use a torpedo bridge officer ability. It's really not worth using, especially given the fact that the torpedo in this set is a transphasic torpedo, which also suck. But what I would do is just take the omni beam and the console from this set and mix it in with the other set. Next, from the weapon set Beyond the Nexus, is a weapon set I actually get a lot of use out of the Trilithium Laced Weaponry Set. This has a three piece set bonus but has four pieces an omni beam and turret, a torpedo, and a console. The Omni Beam and Turret are must-haves for any phaser build because of their proc, which is a chance to buff your weapon's haste. The console isn't that great, but it does add the two-piece bonus, which is a persistent haste buff. I wouldn't bother with the torpedo. It's a tricobalt torpedo, which really aren't great. And the three-piece bonus is just a small buff to damage resistance and hull capacity. It's not worth it. And one more for the new Frontiers arc in the episode Skyla and Cherubdis. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. This episode rewards the Bajoran Defense Set, which consists of a shield, deflector, and engine. There's also a fourth piece to this set too, a Warp Core, which can be found in the Phoenix Prize store. This is a nice starter set, not something I would want to use forever, but a good placeholder until I gain access to Reputation and Fleet Gear. Next we're jumping ahead to the Gamma Quadrant arc with Quark's Lucky 7. This episode rewards Lex Throwing Knives, which are a ranged ground weapon that deal physical damage. Because it deals physical damage, this weapon is great to use against the Borg, because the Borg can't adapt to physical damage. There are a number of other ranged weapons that also deal physical damage, but being an episode reward, this one is the easiest to get. So it makes a good placeholder for something you might like better, like the TR-116 or Cochrane Shotgun. Also in the Gamma Quadrant arc is the episode Home. This rewards the Morphogenic Armament set and the Phase Waveform Beacon. The Morphogenic set is that other Polaron weapons build I was talking about earlier. It consists of a unique 360 degree energy weapon, an energy torpedo, and a console. The energy weapon is the Morphogenic Polaron energy weapon, which can function as either an Omni Beam or a turret. It'll function as a beam anytime you use fire at will or beam overload, or act like a turret anytime you use scatter volley or rapid fire. Though I should note that the system does consider this an omni beam, so it will fall under the same restrictions as all other omni beams. So you won't be able to use this with another set omni. The two piece set isn't that remarkable, but the three piece bonus can give a stacking buff to crit chance, crit severity, or weapons damage. Which buffs you get will depend on which abilities you activate. Fire at will and beam overload will give you a crit chance buff, scatter volley or rapid fire will give you a crit severity buff, and Torpedo Spread, Torpedo High Yield, Mind Pattern Alpha, or Mind Pattern Beta will give you a weapons damage buff. If you're running Polaron, this three piece is definitely a must have. Also in this episode is the Phase Waveform Beacon, which, like any beacon, summons in a bunch of friendly NPCs to fight alongside you. This one summons in friendly Herc ships. In the Jula's Discovery arc, next is the episode Illusion of Communication. This episode rewards the Pavan Healing Crystal. It can be a useful ground device because it's basically a persistent hypospray. Hyposprays are consumed on use, so if you don't want to have to worry about restocking, this could be a great alternative. The Healing Crystal is technically considered a normal hypo, so if you have any traits or duty officers that trigger off of the use of a hypo, this will still work. However, the actual heal the crystal gives is a little different than what a hypo gives. The Pavo Crystal is a heal over time effect, whereas the hypo is one big one-time heal. So a large hypo would probably still be a better panic button, but as I said earlier, you don't have to worry about restocking the Pavo Crystal. Moving on to the Klingon Civil War arc, first we have the episode Leap of Faith, which rewards the Fakiri Torment Engine and the Nanopulse Plasma Torpedo. 
The Torment Engine is a console that increases your non-hazard damage over time abilities, as well as several forms of exotic damage. The Nanopulse Plasma Torpedo deals some extra plasma damage over time. Because of these damage over time effects, both of these are pretty decent for a budget science build. At least until you can get your hands on some reputation gear. From the episode Warriors of the Empire, you can get the Tetrion Mine Launcher. If you like Torpedo Mine Layer builds, this is definitely a must-have, because these Tetrion Mines have a unique proc that drain enemy shields. And anything that can help kill shields is really nice on a kinetic build like that. And in the following episode, A Day Long Remembered is the Tetrion Mine Barrier Kit Module. It's basically a ground version of that Mine Launcher. It functions like the Chronoton Mine Barrier Kit Module that engineers get access to, but this one's a universal kit module, and it has that same shield jarring as the space version. It's not the most amazing kit module in the game, but it's nice budget gear. And now from the recent Terran Gambit story arc, first we have the episode Blue Shift, which rewards the Terran Knife device. This is an interesting device that will override the tertiary attack of any of your weapons, and replace it with a knife attack. The third attack on most weapons is just a standard rifle butt or palm strike, so with this device equipped, that'll be replaced with you being able to stab him with a knife. However, there are a few weapons I wouldn't use this device with, because some weapons do have unique tertiary attacks, like the staff attack with the Trill Staff weapon, or the spinning AoE melee on the Bulin cannon. This device will override those attacks as well. Though if you're sticking to a free-to-play build, you probably won't have access to those anyway. These next two episodes can't be found in the normal episode menu. That's because these are old episodes that have been moved out of the main story and are now considered more side quests. This first one is out of the old Spectre's arc, Skirmish. This rewards the Subspace Field Modulator device, which is useful for upping your defense and damage resistance rating. Just don't use it against anything that deals proton damage like the Undine, because this also nerfs your resistance against proton damage. Fortunately, very few enemies actually use proton damage, so this will be safe to use in most cases. And the last item on this list can be found in the Wasteland arc in the episode Installation 18. And that item is another beacon device, the Nimbus Pirate Distress Call. This one's a bit more support-focused than the other beacon devices, because some of the ships that warp in will have heal abilities which they will apply to you. Yeah, those are episodes with some must-have gear for Star Trek Online. Now, Star Trek Online is always putting out new episodes, so eventually this video is going to go out of date, but it's a good jumping-off point considering that this covers pretty much the first 12 years of Star Trek Online. But yeah, this is just an example that there is a ton of good free gear in Star Trek Online, and this doesn't even cover stuff from the Reputations or Fleets, those are going to be two entirely different videos. If there's any episode gear that I missed or that you think I should have pointed out, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit the join button or the super thanks button. Either way, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it, guys. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.